Kantanimi, I turn the bima to you. Sure, and I, I I know that I got it to you under the wire, but I'm wondering if you I have, have it. A, I've got it. I've got, got it. it. Great. So uh, those who have been in the class for a while know that periodically I you know tie us into the the erstwhile um, uh, Psalms project that that Shir Yaakov uh, did, where he was doing uh, wrote, wrote a composition a day for each of the Psalms. He only got through about sixty seven of them before he stopped, um, but. I don't know when we're going to get to Psalm 67, so we still have plenty to work with in the meantime. Um, and I was really struck yesterday by the uh, the Barbara Manda interpretation, how she took such a gentle approach with the text. And so when I heard that Shir Yaakov write this melody for the last verse, it kind of evoked for me some of that same gentleness. Um, that is not necessarily in the um, on the surface of the text, but is contained further within and again he uses um, a very renewal reconstructionist kind of way of rendering the four letter name of God um, instead of saying Adonai um, or Hashem or anything masculine he uh, changes it to Havaya which means kind of like being or existence Mahavaya ve uzeha, Nashira uzam rage bura teha. Rumahavaya ve uzeha, Nashira uzam rage bura teha. Ruma 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 havaya. Ruma 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 havaya. Ruma 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 havaya. Ruma 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 havaya. Nashira unizamera. Ye bura teha. Nashira unizamera, gebura techa. Ruma havaya beuzeha, nashira uzamra gebura techa. Ruma havaya beuzeha, nashira uzamra gebura techa. Ruma 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 havaya, ruma 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 havaya, ruma 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 havaya, ruma 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 havaya. Shira unizamera, gebura teha. Shira unizamera, gebura teha. Ruma havaya beuzeha. Nashira unzamra gebura teha. Ruma havaya beuzeha. Nashira unzamra gebura teha. And with a chant like this, you would just keep going and loop the parts over and over again um, and really have it fit until it filled your whole being. He, he went on for several, several minutes with something like that. You know, Cantor, there was a group, a Psalms chanting group that was a renewal thing at the JCC that I went to for several years. We would gather once a month and we would have, it was really just six or eight texts that were like this, that were one or two lines generally from a Psalm. Um, sometimes from a prayer, and we would just repeat them, and someone had a shruti, and we'd close our eyes, and we'd get comfortable, and we'd take our shoes off, and it really was magical to approach the Psalms that way from sort of a much, much more embodied way than just the intellectual study that we've been doing. Do you ever do this in your synagogue? Um, I haven't yet, but it's something that I've thought about doing, especially because um, there's a lot of various practices around it, too. Rabbi Shefa Gold has actually a whole um, she teaches a class, actually. Yes, these, these were students this. of Chef of Golds. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to. I haven't had a chance to take that class yet, but I really would love to. Um, but yeah, to, to allow, take that one small verse or phrase and let it expand and expand until it, it fills your whole, your whole being. Wow. Ruhi oh. Sophia did that when she was with us. Yes, she did. Maxine Rubinstein. Yes. So before we launch into today's Chavruta, I promised to do something else, which was so many of you very graciously filled out this survey to show how many of you have purchased the books. And there were a lot of interesting suggestions for other books that are not on our basic list. And I made a list that I will be sharing. I thought I would put it up and some of you, hopefully some of the people who made the suggestions are in class. Um, and can talk to us about the books that you suggested. So we'll just take a few minutes with that, if that's okay. So um, 
On the bottom here, obviously the basic books are the Alter Levy, Fisher, Mitchell, Bernstein, and Metsuda. I know there are some people who are new in the class. I will be sending out the basic list again with this list. So the first book that came up, this is in no particular order, was Joy, Despair, and Hope by Edward Feld. Is the person who recommended that book here in class today? And if so, just unmute yourself. Because I wasn't that familiar with it. Okay. The healing of soul, healing of body is obviously Simca wine traps, which that, that would be me. That would be me, Harold. And I and I think this was something that Rabbi Klein. Edward, well, I'm sorry, the Edward Feld. Yeah, okay, yeah. Talk to us about it, Lori. You know, she had had recommended it, um, and it's it's very moving. It, it's again picked out just psalms that um, express certain topics. So it's it's not every single psalm, and it's you know, care, joy, despair, and hope are, are how it's divided. And it, it's just interesting translations. Um, On a scale of one to five, what would you give it? I, I would give it like a eight or nine. I, I love it. Okay. Yeah, they're very moving um, translations. Okay. Um, Weintraub, we know, Tormented Master was the life of um, uh, Reb Nachman of Reb Nachman yeah. of Breslov. Um, the Jewish Study Bible is one that I can't recommend enough. Are you holding that up now too, Lori? Yeah, Jewish yeah. Bible. The I mean, Jewish yeah. Study Bible is basically the, J, the JPS translation with copious essays and notes. And really, if you have more than one book in that, that might actually be the one book that should be the center of your Jewish library. And there's, there's great, uh, even just for Psalms, there's essays and notes that are really um, illuminating. Um, Psalms in a translation for praying, speaking of the renewal movement, Reb, Rabbi Zalman Shachter Shalomi was the founder of the renewal, well, if it, if it even is a movement. Um, and I just got that book and I like it. I don't like it as much now as I did before. I knew as much as I know now, but it is an interesting um, sort of contemporary translation. Uh, Cantor Nimi, do you have it? Do you like, is it, would anyone else have I, that or like to comment on it? I have it. And again, it's, it's like hit or miss for me. There are some Psalms where I really actually find it meaningful and others where I prefer others or where I like pieces of the translation, but maybe not in, in its totality. Okay. Um, is anyone here who recommended the complete Psalms by Pamela Greenberg? All right. The Koran Tehillim, I love the Koran series for their typography and their paper. Um, it's a beautifully made book. It has the worst introductions and notes I have ever seen. It <laughs> almost, it's, it, it's just, it, it, I, I won't even repeat what they are because they're so out of left field and they so trivialize the Psalms, but the text is beautiful and it has all of the, the text is beautiful. The translations are okay. And it has all of the, um, the cantillation marks. So I find it interesting. The art scroll Missora with interlinear translation several times we've speak, spoken about that. It's the one where the English goes from right to left along with the Hebrew. And it is the exact literal translation under each word. So if you're at the point where you're, which all of us I think are, where it's sometimes you'd really like to know exactly what is this word, it is a good resource. Um, Martin Cohen's Our Haven and Our Strength is the person who recommended that here. Okay. On the book of Psalms, Nahun Sarma, Sarna, actually Rabbi Kleinbaum gave me a copy of that. And it is a very, very interesting book of essays by a leading scholar. Has anyone here read that and like to talk about it? The Sarna. All right. Opening Your Heart with Psalm 27 by Rabbi Deborah J. Robbins. Is the person who recommended that here by any chance? Or in time of need, uh, Fra Yeshivath Beth, Beth Moshe. If anyone's here who has experience with these, I'll just let you unmute yourself. Obviously, The Art of Bible Translation by Robert Alter is a much longer version of what he does in his introduction to our Psalms book. And I thought it was fascinating. Um, Susan Lipson raised her hand. Susan. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I recommended uh, on the book of 
Psalms by Nahum, Sarna, okay. Opening Your Heart with Psalm 27, and In Time of Need. Those are the three that I added to the list. The Sarna I love. I have his book on Genesis and on Exodus, and they're just fantastic insights into historical, into context for, for all of that. Okay. I love it. And I know Rabbi Kleinbaum had recommended it. I had it. I've had it a long time. Um, opening your heart to Psalm 27, I bought for a, a very particular, you know, uh, period of time. I did not get to use it this year the way I wanted to, but it's a great, I like it. It's an, a, a great book. And in time of need came from a yeshiva, you know, they did this book themselves for, for their community. And it's a really nice book also. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Um, I have said this, I mean, I wouldn't recommend, I, I'm not telling anyone to go out and buy a copy of the Book of Common Prayer, although it is a wonderful, important book of literature in the English translation, but the Psalter, the Psalms, which are not quite the King James translation I love in the Book of Common Prayer, and I will admit that when my go-to translation is always the King James Bible, although some of the words may not be translated in a way that we would use them now, I find that the the words and the majesty of it, to me, sometimes convey better what I feel the Hebrew is conveying than does a more literal or correct translation. Um, and then the J English he Hebrew English JPS Tanakh, which is the basic Jewish Bible in a Hebrew English version, is also something that a lot of people said they had. A few more minutes, and then we will go on to Amar Chevrut. Uh, Lori Siegel, you have your hand up. Yes, Harold, I didn't put this in, but it just occurred to me I'd left it out. The Lord is My Shepherd by Harold Kushner. The Lord is My Shepherd, Healing Wisdom of the 23rd Psalm. I've been going through that, and I find it to be very useful. Heard by Harold Kushner? Kushner, okay. yeah. I'll put that on the list. Great. No, it is not. I did. I forgot to add it. No, I will put, I just put it on, I just put it okay. on the list. Judy Hollander. <laughs> Just a second, I have, I forgot what I put, okay. Um, we studied this in the study group a long time ago. I think it was the first book um, that we did together, The Great Poems of the Bible, A Reader's Companion with New Translations. It's by James Kugel, who has done some other things about the Bible, a lot of things about the Bible, but this just picks out um, selected um, psalms and some other things and he does and it, it's like a, you learn more about how they're written and how they fit into the larger canon great thank so you. i i really recommend this great i put it on the list sherry i have the five books of moses by alter right and uh i i know it doesn't have psalms but i find it very illuminating for the five books well, actually, you know, he had done the, the various books, and now there is a three volume um, translation by him of everything, wow. which, and which a lot of people have in their bookcases, I see. Cantor Nimi? Yes, I, I may have misheard you before. I thought you were asking me to comment on the, the also comment on the Zalm and Schachter, as opposed to the, the Poets Book of Psalms, which was, I had recommended both of them, um, but I could speak about the Poets Book of Psalms, okay. which is... Um, a complete, it, it, it's not specifically Jewish complete, Psalter as rendered by 25 poets from uh, the 16th to the 20th centuries. Um, and so it's just like a lot of like classical po uh, poetic renderings of the Psalms um, with a okay. nice variety and also includes the King James version of the Psalms in the back for people who want a, oh. an additional reference. Great, thank you, thank you. I actually was asking about the uh, oh, okay. Dr. Salome. Um, Lisa and Ellen, and then we'll go into Hevruta. Lisa? So I have the Hirsch to Hillim and um, Rav Samson Raphael Hirsch. I think he's known as the savior of orthodoxy in the United States. Um, and he's an amazing commentator. And in true orthodox style, he has this amazing mixture of deeply academic and practical, as well as very metaphysical. And he merges them. And you kind of have to pick through it a little bit. So I don't pay attention to everything he says, but the academic part of what he says and how he ties it to the more metaphysical aspects of the Psalms, I think, are fascinating. And I've really enjoyed reading this book. Terrific. Uh, and then our last one, Ellen Poster. 
Yeah, I just wanted to recommend um, a contemporary psalmist. His name is Alden, A-L-D-E-N, Solovy, S-O-L-O-V-Y. He has a website where he has his poetry and he's written um, at least several books of contemporary psalms. We use them fairly often um, uh, during our Friday night services at uh, Road of Shalom and they're beautiful. Great. And I just want to add to what Ellen said that he all um, through Ritual Well, you can sign up for classes that he teaches on writing your own prayers and writing your own psalms. And they were they are they're excellent classes. Wow. This is wonderful. So I'm going to uh, um, circulate this list after class and I see other things in chat. And anyone who wants to chat up something else that we missed, please do so. We now move to a three person, our three person Chevruta. Uh, it's 10.15. Why don't we spend 20 minutes in Chevruta and 10 minutes with um, report out. I hope that all of you got the corrected uh, two page printout about um, Fisher's view of sovereignty, which we can read and discuss together and then look at his translation of 21 and then come back. How does that sound Tasha? Uh, 20 minutes of Chevruta then bring us back. Sounds good. Okay. Ready? Away we go. Hi, everyone. I see everyone filtering back in. An interesting conversation, I am sure. All right. So I'm going to look at participants. And I'm going to take hands for people who want to briefly say what happened in their Kavruta. Sarah Sloan's hand shot right up. Sarah. Okay, I was with the Dratfields and uh, Margot Cates, and we stayed basically on the introduction. And it's about the essence, we talked about the essence of sovereignty and how it relates to us as individuals. Okay. Um, Saul. So I was with Sarah Siegel and Michael Goldstein. And um, so I'm only going to speak to me because we spend time on the psalm, on his interpretation of the psalm, and how confused I was, since he does not capitalize other than the first letter of every line, who the U's are. Are the U's the king or the sovereign? If you take the sovereign as Hashem or whatever, whatever, whatever. So then at the very end, when he writes, the strength of your saving sovereignty lifts you up. Who, you? You. The, the, it's not lifting the, this power. The power is already up. You know, it's the saving. And we sing in praise of your power. Well, that will all agree on is the eternal or whatever, whatever he's, and he's as nasty in his retribution to the enemies as the original Psalm is because they're cauterizing and he's, they're, they're scoring their seed so it won't ripen. I mean, he's as bad as the original Psalm, but as the introduction says, he believes in the badness of this, in the, the destructiveness of, of the Psalms. I'm talking too much. Bye-bye. Randy? I was with Shep and Susan, and I'm sorry, I can't remember her last name. And we Lipson. spent- some, Lipson. Thank you, Shep. And we spent some time on um, Fisher's definition of sovereignty as spiritual authenticity and we were talking about how it can be personal sovereignty and also the sovereignty of God. And for me personally, um, it reminded me of Rabbi Moskowitz's teaching, the, um, you know, cause he, he talks about, um, Fisher talks about the highest potential of human experience. And I think that's what Rabbi Moskowitz is always talking about that we should try to be as good as we can possibly be spiritually. And then in the Psalm itself, um, we were questioning 
why, what's the importance of the fact that they turn the enemy around so that when you pierce them with arrows, you're facing them. And that's it. It was a great group. Cantor Nimi. Sure, I was with uh, Linda Solomon and Gail Meister, and we uh, also we, we went through you know Fisher's sovereignty thoughts, um, and one of the things that came out was thinking about this relationship between that which is sovereign over that which is sovereign over that which is sovereign over that, like this like layering of like, um, and that there's then that then define implies that there's a relationship of a of a connection between every layer. We you know you're sovereign over your house hold just as somebody who's sovereign over that larger space and on and on, which then connects you up to the God as the, the ultimate sovereignty. Um, and that that really connected with like Fisher's phrase, uh, you know, the king puts all his trust in you and rooted in your kindness, he shall not be moved. This idea that um, the way that we um, have that spiritual authenticity is actually what enables God to have to not be moved as well. And that there's a connection between our um, embodying our sovereignty that enables God to enable to, to fully embody God's sovereignty. So I will say that uh, I was with um, Dean and Peter Klein. We had a very interesting conversation. We read through the introduction, then we read through the, so the, the, the uh, translation and we were also flummoxed with the use. We actually, I pulled Alter off the, the shelf to take a look at it because we were so confused as to who was talking to who, who was who, that we needed some clarification. So my feeling is that either um, we're reading this, uh, we're reading this, we're not reading it carefully, or Fisher isn't clear, or that Fisher wants us to be confused, that Fisher could easily capitalize or not. And Fisher wants us to have to puzzle out who is who, who is God, who is the king in this, um, in this translation. Uh, I will say that we had some conversations about sovereignty. We also had some conversations where I felt that he was really good on, on the enemy, who the enemy was. And I have to go back and reread about sovereignty. It did not really speak to me. Darina? I was with, with Barbara during the just the two of us for some reason. Well, I have to admit that I have never had so much difficulty with Fisher before. And I realized that I simply don't understand Buddhism and that gets in the way this time very badly. And uh, when I looked, read the introduction, this is university level writing. The sheer vocabulary he uses, I only understand it because I studied English literature at university. I don't know how it is for native speakers who don't have that kind of education. Right. But even that isn't the exact kind of education that is needed in this case. All right, so it is time for our play out um, and time for me to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Uh, I hope to see you tomorrow where I have to say I am doing the I am doing the announcements because uh, Sabrina is away. So if you want me to say anything special, let me know. Um, it, it's a pleasure working with both with with all of you. Um, the rabbi will certainly be back on Monday. I do not have a deadline for Psalm 21 offerings. Uh, you can submit them to Annika as you wish. We will have a slightly different rotation for the next reading. We will not be reading them on Monday. We will be back studying this psalm um, with the rabbi. I, I don't know when we would be reading them. Um, I'm not setting a deadline of Sunday, but if you wanted to get things in by Sunday, that might be a good idea. Um, and with that, Cantor Nimi, would you chant us or sing us out with that beautiful uh, sure. question from Shir Yaakov? Absolutely. As I pull it up. What will we be studying on uh, Monday with Rabbi Kleinbaum? 21. We will certainly be studying Psalm 21 with Rabbi Kleinbaum because we, you only had one day with her on this psalm. But we will uh, write our interpretation and submit it by Sunday. Is that oh, correct? Michael, Michael, that is not what I said. What I said was, I don't know. 
and that Sunday is a good time to, uh, I'm not setting a deadline of Sunday, but if you're going to be writing something and could get it in by Sunday, we're ahead of the game. And when the rabbi comes back on Monday, we will have the exact schedule for next week. All right, so I, I, hear should, from her. I shouldn't uh, write my interpretation until after Monday. I'm not saying that either, Michael. <laughs> I'm saying that I, I don't have an answer for you. I know you would like one. I don't have one. Thank I'm, you. Okay. Yeah, all right, I just won't if, write any. And right. if I get if I get one over the weekend, I will let you know. Thank you. Some things are mysteries, and some some things are secrets, and some things are mysteries. This one is a mystery. Can't um, and I, uh, as we sing, I just want to note because uh, Shiryakov mm -hmm. also translates all of the various verses that he sets to music, and I just thought it was interesting mm -hmm. that he chose to translate the you know, the ineffable name of God as breath of life. Mm -hmm which I thought was just an interesting appellation for, for God's uh, holy name. Ruma Havaya Beuzeha, Nashira was a Braga Pura Teha. Ruma 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 Havaya, Ruma 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 Havaya, Ruma 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 Havaya. Ruma 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 havaya, nashira unezamera, gevura techa, nashira unezamera, gevura techa. Ruma havaya beuzeha, nashira unezamera, gevura techa. Ruma havaya beuzeha, nashira unezamera, gevura techa. Ruma 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 havaya. Ruma ruma havaya, ruma 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 havaya, ruma 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 havaya. Nashira unezamera, gevura techa. Nashira unezamera, gevura techa. Ruma havaya beuzecha, nashira unezamera gevura techa. Ruma havaya beuzecha. Thank you so much, Cantor Nimi, as always, for the beauty of your music and the eloquence of your scholarship. I will see you all on Monday, if not before. Bye-bye.